guys, so I am back filming in my kitchen again. First of all, sorry, because <laughs> it's been several weeks. I said I was gonna put up a video. I'm gonna be honest and say that, um, you know, I had so many things planned to do for October. Like, I wanted to do a whole Halloween series where, um, I went ahead and reviewed some of my favorite episodes from Are You Afraid of the Dark? And then some of my favorite shows and Halloween movies in general. And also I wanted to do like a, a review on the new Halloween that just came out in the theaters because I saw that and I really loved it. But time got away from me. I got really super busy. I also don't like to record when other people are home because it's just awkward and they're annoying and they kind of sit over there and listen in and it's just like Jesus. If I had my own place, my own room, then I feel like my schedule would be better and my videos would look better because I wouldn't be filming in a kitchen. However, that is not the case right now. So, oh well. Anyway, so what I'm going to be doing, at least for the rest of this year, I want to start reviewing the Titans TV show because I feel like it's not getting enough good press. Like, people are still hung up on little things, which I'll get into that at the end of the video. But right now, I just want to go ahead and recap episode four real quick. I'm not going to bother with one through three because this video would be forever long and who has time for that? Um, So I'm sure you guys, anyone who's been watching knows what's happened in the first three episodes. They went from introducing the characters briefly, um, having Dick and Rachel connect, then having them go and meet Hawk and Dove in the next episode and also introduce the well the side I'm gonna call them the minor villains of the season the nuclear family because I'm positive they're obviously working for someone bigger and that person is obviously working for a Trigon so we introduced the nuclear family in episode two established them as an th actual threat and then we got back to S Starfire and Rachel episode three meeting up um, and then connecting with Dick, we saw Gar for a little bit, so we had that one brief scene with all four of them together, which was really cute and cool, and I wanted so much more, but I'm not going to complain because I understand what they're doing, they're trying to build up to it, and I feel like, at first I was getting like, like, oh my god, just come on, let them meet already, but, um, I'm a writer myself, and I get the point of stretching it out and building up to it. It makes it more meaningful. It makes it matter more when it finally happens. So I understand why they're doing that. So anyway, let's get to episode four, Doom Patrol. So, Doom Patrol starts off with Rachel who had just blown up the, what do you even call that? Starts with Rachel after she blew up the monastery. Is it, would we call it monastery? See, I'm not sure. I, I, I obviously need to do more research before I just start saying stuff. But I'm just gonna go ahead and call it a monastery. She blew that up and she ran off and she ran into Gar somehow. That was just, hey, that was pure plot convenience and luck, but I will take it, whatever. So she runs into Gar and Gar takes her back home um, to Doom Patrol. But on the way, they run into these, um, these hunters who had shot a deer and the whole point of that is so that, you know, they leave clues, obviously, so Dick and Corey will be able to find them later, which I don't really have a problem with how they do that. I think it was actually not that obvious when it was happening, because when I saw the scene, I thought the point of that scene was that Rachel can heal, apparently heal dead things, bring dead things back to life like a necromancer, but... Um, that was obviously part of the point, but I feel like the main point was so that they would have run into someone who Dick could track down to then get to Rachel at the end of the episode. Anyway, so that happened. She's a necromancer. That's probably not going to be a good thing when it comes up again. Um, so they go and they meet the Doom Patrol and they're all so cool. There's something about those characters. They remind me, they remind me of another Thing I've seen before and I can't really pinpoint it like just the vibe of, of their whole little crew together um because I know not I'm not gonna sit here and lie I don't know anything about the Doom Patrol this was actually the first I've ever heard of them when 
the show was first coming out and they're like, Gar won't be with the Titans already. And I was like, wait, why not? And they're like, he's going to be with the Doom Patrol first. And I was like, who's the Doom Patrol? <laughs> Who is that? Just research how they look, but I don't know much about them besides that they're all like basically failed medical experience. experiments. Sorry. Um... So, yeah, also, I'm sorry about the quality of this video. I don't know if I said that already, but it's not going to be super high quality because my digital camera is charging, and that is my fault because I forgot to charge it last time. Sorry. So, the Doom Patrol is really cool, and right off the bat, they make it clear that the chief, the one who saved them, or the, I don't know why they call, I think that's what they were calling him was chief, and not doctor. I don't know why they want to just, you know what, let's not dwell on this. So they made it clear <laughs> that he's kind of a scary guy. Like, yes, he helped them, but also he's some he's someone that makes them all a bit nervous. Gar obviously brought Rachel there because um, he has a crush on her, which is not a solid reason. But also it's made clear towards the end that he also, you know, actually cares about what she's going through and wants to help her. Um... And so, yeah, so Chief was obviously mad at him, but the way he reprimanded him, like, or talks to him is just unfortunate. And obviously, it's the way he treats the rest of them as well. They seem a little afraid of him. Um, so, anywho, to Corey and Dick, those two aren't exactly hitting it off so well. They're more, they're still kind of arguing with each other. It's actually really funny and entertaining, and I'm here for all the antagonist like scenes they go to the monastery and the sister tells them you know rachel blew it up because she locked her up like an idiot and then she ran off so then you know dick and Corey are off to go look for her they go to the police station she has to stay in a car because as dick says her costume is outrageous and obviously you know, she's wanted by the police for assaulting the police. So it's probably not a good idea for her to waltz up in the police station. You know, in the same classroom, she's assaulted all those cops in. And he says that, and she's like, yeah, I blend in well. Bless your heart, Corey. No, you don't. You don't blend in at all. So he goes in, he finds out that, you know, the two hunters, as I said, did see Rachel and Gar run off. And... Um, the cop is like, you know, the hunter was, he, that guy, he was drunk, probably know what he was talking about anyway, but that gets his, his, you know, his address, his information, and him and Corey go hunt down, and then Dick, instead of just being a little patient, you know, and finding out what the guy knows, he decides to just go, just ape shit, you know, full ape shit on the guy, and then Corey has to stop him, because he's damn near beating him to death and his son is watching the whole thing go down um so he does tell Dick and Corey where she possibly ran off to um the old house yeah they go off to the old house but on the way you know Corey tells Dick that one he obviously needs help and that though she doesn't remember everything she knows for a fact that you can't deal with all your problems alone which when she says this, Dick gives her this look like it makes him think. And that comes up again later when they actually get to the house. They get in there and he goes and he finds Rachel. I don't want to skip too far ahead because I do want to get into what happens at the house before Dick and Corey get there. So basically, um, the chief, he brought in some new person who needed saving. And Rachel was able to stabilize her and, you know, stop her from dying. Because that's what he specializes in is, um... All the members of the Doom Patrol were basically, they should have died. They were, they should have been dead. Regular medical science was not going to be able to save him. But he had some special thing, which I haven't quite figured out how he's able to do this. But he injects them with whatever and he's able to save them somehow. And, you know, pulling out whatever mysterious thing from his little toolkit. But all the ways he saves them, it makes their life more difficult. Like, um... Robot Man. Let me actually... Give me one second. I'm going to look up their names real quick because I want to not just sound stupid and be making up names, obviously. Robot Man, Steel Cliff. He was a race car driver. Um, and basically he got in a really bad accident and 
his mind was functioning, his body was not, from my understanding. So Chief put his mind into a robot body. That sucks. Negative man. Um, so basically he had an accident that brought him into conflict with the spirit of negative energy. I don't know if that's correct, but I think that's that's what happened to him but he's all wrapped up like a mummy so he can't have a normal life either and then there's Alaska girl who I think she was exposed to like nuclear was it Rita or Alaska girl her name's Rita but they call her Alaska girl as well um but like she basically she melts if she doesn't have like a large caloric intake I I guess um, in order to control her condition, she'll, she'll just start melting. Um, so none of them are really able to, to exist in public, except for Gar, and you know what happens to Gar, he, he was sick, he had some kind of infl inf uh, infliction or something, and the chief injected him, and as a side effect, he can now, like, um, form his genes to make other beings, which is how he's able to turn into an animal. Um, animals, actually, but I, he seems to think he can only turn into a tiger for now. But we all know that's not true. That's just all he can do at the moment. Chief says, you know, he's impressed that Rachel was able to help him with that patient and he thinks he can help her. And she says to him, you know, I don't think you can because her, obviously what's going on with Rachel is very different than what's happening with everyone else. Um, you know, she has a whole demon inside of her, possessing her, trying to escape her, or force her to open a door to let her father through. Yeah, it's very different than just having side effects from a blotched medical experiment. That's very different. Um, however, so he straps her down and he's like, oh, I'm going to help you today. And she... She gets the feeling that, you know, it's going to be a horrible idea. So she decides, she changes her mind. And Gar is there, Gar's down there with them. It's Gar, her, and Chief. And she says, you know, I don't want to do this anymore. Let me off the table. And Gar is sitting there and she turns to him and she's like, please, Gar, you're my friend. Let me off this table. And so Gar finally has the courage to stand up to the Chief. And he says, you know, let her go. She doesn't want to do it anymore. He tells him to sit down and Gar says no. And it's obviously the first time he's ever stood up to him. And so Chief attacks him, knocks him out, and decides to continue experimenting on Rachel. Only Raven, should I call her Raven, her like demon counterpart? I don't know what I should call it. Because I feel like Raven is who she becomes after she learns to control her and she gets a gem on her forehead and then she becomes Raven. I don't know. Let's just call it her evil twin decides, you know, knock if you buck, knock the chief out. So upstairs, you know, Corey and Dick come in. They meet the Doom Patrol very briefly. Dick runs in and this is the scene where what Corey said to Dick in the car about not dealing with things alone comes up again. And Cor um, Rachel is there and she's like in front of like a huge portal and it's not quite explained what the hell is going on, but I think she was basically um, inviting her dad back into the human world. So Rachel is telling him, you know, get out of there. And Dick hugs her and he says, you know, you're not alone. I was wrong about what I said before about dealing with things alone. You don't have to deal with anything alone. I'm right here. And so then they decide, you know, we cut to the scene with the three of them leaving. And um, Robot Man actually tells Gar that he should go with them because that's where he belongs. He can live a life that they can't. So he says goodbye and then the four of them leave. And the very end scene is the chief like looking out the window and you know his back actually got broken. And interesting enough they say again. So I'm guessing this is something that happened to him has happened to him before. Um maybe he was his own first experiment. I'm not sure. Um so yeah, he's looking out the window, looking at them leave. So obviously he's going to play a part again. He's probably going to be a villain in the Doom Patrol spinoff series. I'm wondering about that. But we'll see. And we'll see if we do see the Doom Patrol again in this season. Maybe we will. I don't know. Um, I know we're definitely going to see Hawk, Doc, and, ugh, Doc and Huff. Wow. Hawk and Duff again. So looking forward to that. Hopefully Dawn recovers.
Holy shit, she fell off a building. That's rough. Oh, who's excited about next episode? All four of them are going to be together. They're going to be fighting the nuclear family. They're going to be seeing what they can do, training, and seeing how they work as a team. It's going to be awesome. I'm excited. You guys should be excited. I hope you are. But now that that's over, I want to get into... <sighs> What's bothering me about this show? It's not even the show. It's it's the people watching the show that's bothering me. First of all, Starfire's costume. I, I think what I wish is that people would just be honest because her costume is not the issue. It's the actress that you're mad at. First of all, when we first saw the, the photos for the show, I'm not going to act like they looked good. They didn't. But how many times have we seen leaked on-set behind-the-scene photos for movies and TV shows and they look awful. Do we really not know by now that that's never the f final product? Do we... Like, how many times does it need to happen before we get that through our skulls? I don't get what what prompted people to think, oh man, these behind-the-scene photos that were leaked must be the final... That That's their final looks. And people just ran with that for months. I'm like, is everyone stupid but me? Or what Like, what exactly is happening here? And people really were just making videos and posts after posts and losing their minds over looks that were obviously, obviously not the final looks. I don't know, like, what kind of drugs everyone was taking this year, but come on, we've seen this and we knew that wasn't the final look. Then... They decided to focus in on, you know, Starfire and Anna Drop in particular. And they wanted to act like the reason they were so narrowed in on her and her wig and her look is because it's the worst. And the, the, no, absolutely not. You're just being racist, which they proved because she had to leave social media because people were hurling racial, you know, slurs at her. And... What was really ridiculous about it is that, you know, we also saw Dove's wig and we also saw Rachel's and they are also bad. And I can pull up a million shows that are airing, that have aired, that I've seen and some that I haven't seen that all have terrible wigs. And then on top of that, it's like they were on and on about this costume. Okay, first of all, in the, the pictures that were leaked... You saw Dick, Rachel, and Gara, all in like street clothes. And then you saw um, Corey in this getup that was obviously not regular street clothes. And it's like, my first thought was, there's obviously a story behind this because it looks like some kind of weird Halloween costume, right? Then we come to find out a couple months later that she's undercover at some disco club. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds about right. She looks like she's undercover at some random disco party club thing. And even after finding that out, people were just like, mm, they literally just blocked all the, they blocked that information out. Like, like if it was really, if that was really just the problem, they would have shut the hell up about it right then and there. But they just kept going. They're still going about this. And I'm like, you already know why she's wearing this. Like, what is the problem now? And they keep going on and on and on. And then the other stupid thing they were doing, they like, oh, go, the cosplayers look better. The cos let me put some pictures of these cosplayers. You lied. That's a whole lie. They don't look better. They look like they're wearing plastic painted purple. That's just like sticking to the spot. There was a whole one who was wearing little um, construction tape that was painted purple over like just her nipples. And they're like, yeah, this one looks way better than the live action. I'm like, are you sure about that? It's the actress. Just be honest. Just be honest and say you were mad that they casted a dark skinned actress to play this role. After all the information that you have, that one, this is not the real costume, that two, this isn't even her real wig. You know what I mean? Three, the other girls' wigs look horrible too. You know all of that information and you're still just like zeroed in, narrowed in on Anna jo and, and Starfire. Nonsense. Nonsense. That's not, that's not why you're mad. 
And they proved my point because all of these cosplays they kept putting up. There are dark skin cosplayers who have played as Starfire, but surprisingly, no one ever put up pictures of them. How strange. It was always some really light skinned black girl, which usually it was, you know, the blurds who put those ones up. Um, or a white girl. And then I even saw like the most outrageous thing I think that ever came out of this. And also the funniest is that Starfire should have been a Latina. She's obviously a space Latina. The fuck is a space Latina? If someone wants to put down in a comment what the fuck a space Latina is, I'm, I'm so happy. I'm happy to read that. Please explain it to me. Starfire is an orange alien from a planet that does not exist. Okay, she is no race. So there's no wrong casting for her. Just like there was no wrong casting for Gamora. These are aliens. It does not matter. Okay? And while we're on Gamora, real quick, let me just explain a few things. Gamora was casted in a movie that had like a multi-million dollar budget. Okay? They can afford to do nine hours of body pain and and special effects and whatever the fuck else on Gamora. They do not have that budget for the TV show. Obviously. 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 So, <laughs> instead of doing the freaking paint, which would have looked awful on their budget, I promise you that, they decided to just do special effects that when she uses her power, she turns orange, her eyes turn glow green. And it also makes sense because they're having these characters exist in the real world where they can blend into the real world. If she was walking around orange with glowing green eyes, she'd be stuck in that house with the rest of the Doom Patrol. Let's try to make sense. Make sense, guys. At least, at least just use your brains just for five seconds and then you'll figure out why they did things the way they did. It's not that hard. And, and honestly... You can make as many interpretations of these comics as you feel like doing because comic books don't have one straight timeline. They never do. There's so many different versions of them that come out and then they erase and they backtrack and they restart and they redo origins and they do this all the time with all comic book characters. So whichever one you feel like taking that one and then putting your own spin on it, you can absolutely do that. DC owns this show do whatever the hell they want with their own stuff like who are you who are you after all you idiots were done harassing the women right offline you decided to continue on with your crap even after you got you like bullied an explanation out of people out of minka who who explained it several times and whoever else put out that that little short paragraph explaining you know a basic overview of the plot for the series who f felt like they were compelled to explain her friggin' wig and outfit. That's ridiculous. They're explaining an overview of the plot of the series and they have to take a moment to be like, by the way, Starfire's costume looks like this because that's ridiculous. You guys are ridiculous. You're pathetic. You're absolutely stupid. And those of you who are still complaining about this, you're just stop watching the show. First of all, if you're really interested in a show, there's no way you can be like, oh my gosh, I really wanted to watch the show, but then I the way this one character looked bothered me so much that I'm just over it. You were never into it. You wanted to hate the show. People wanted to hate the show because it's a DC show. If this was put out by Marvel, people would be breaking their necks trying to defend every single thing that happens in the show. Because you guys are like little sheep who are just running around. You don't think for yourselves. Everyone, the media told you to hate DC because Marvel was behind the scenes paying people to write negative reviews. But that's a whole other story. <laughs> Whatever. You know, um, hmm. We're not even going to get into that. But anyway, the media told you guys to hate anything DC and you sure did do it and you won't give anything a chance before it even comes out. People just announce the titles of DC things in your life. It's going to be garbage, garbage. Like, it's ridiculous. Please grow up. Please see things for yourself and form your own opinions. I thought this was, you know, something we all learned when we were in, like, middle school. But clearly I was wrong. You guys love the groupthink. You're all about groupthink. You love the hell out of it. You're so happy to be sheep. It's amazing. Amazing to me. The other complaints people were making was about the violence of the show. I just want to say they said what the rating would be. I think they basically just said it's a, it's rated M or it's rated R. 
And they said this so long ago, right? So why would you... I just I don't understand. Like, I'm actually baffled. Why would you watch this show and not expect violence? What? When have you ever watched anything rated R and there have been no violence? What were people expecting? I just want to, I just... It's so strange to me. I feel like I'm in the twilight zone with the way people are reacting to things. Like, they'll have all the information right there and then still be mad when it's exactly what it said it was going to be. What? Like, what? Why? Stop. Just stop watching. Holy shit. Like, if you're going to be this much of a crybaby about it, just don't watch the show. Because there are people who were excited about this, who who are enjoying the show, who want to enjoy the show, who want to have conversations, you know, and just be happy and excited and... But you guys are just always there just pouring... Pouring on negativity everywhere on Twitter and in in the tags and the character tags and the freaking tags of the actresses and actors. You're on YouTube every damn where you're writing your articles. You're just bitching and moaning, and it's like enough. Like why this one chick? I'm gonna find her tweets because she she really took the cake when it came to the bullshit hat. You know, TM her her beef. She's obviously racist. First of all, her beef, she goes, she watches the three ser the three episodes that everyone was able to watch who, you know, got those special passes who were able to go to New York Comic Con and watch it. She watches it and then immediately people who saw the show, a lot who were just bitching for no reason just because Marvel told them to um, ahead of time saw it and they were like, wow, it was shocking. It was shocking. I was so surprised. I thought I was going to hate this, but I actually liked it. Whoa, I didn't see enough footage to tell me I would hate it, but I just thought I would for some reason I can explain. Also, I thought I would absolutely hate Starfire, but she's the star of the show. We love Starfire. So they were all saying this, right? And they were giving it like rave reviews. And she comes and she's like, I liked everything else, but I'm just seeing people like Starfire and... <clears throat> and so people were like, okay... Why would that bother you? Like, if you don't like Starfire, right? For whatever reason, you think she's terrible. You can explain why that is. No one's telling you you can't have your own opinions. But the fact that you're mad that other people like her, like that bothered you? That she was being well-received by other people? You have a personal issue with this character for some reason. She, she even tried to like backtrack and go from Oh, you know, I'm, people are acting like you can't have different opinions or whatever, and I can't say why I dislike it without spoilers. We've seen all the episodes now, and you're still wrong. There's no actually, anything she was saying, like, it's completely irrelevant now that we've all seen the episodes. So she's like, oh, you guys are arguing with people who have seen it, when you, um, and I've seen it, and I don't like her. She's not good. But she wouldn't say why. She wouldn't say why she wasn't good. And she wouldn't say why it bothered her that other people liked her when she didn't. She just really needed the validation of other people hating the character as well. And she didn't get that. And she threw a little hissy fit. And then, you know, said she was being bullied. We saw behind the scenes of, you know, her and her new, a new, a different, couple different wigs, a couple different costumes that are coming up at some point in the series, which we, by the way, we already knew was going to happen because Minka Kelly confirmed that she has costume changes and wig changes later on. She said that. She said it months ago. She said it already. We knew this information. People put that out and she's like, oh, wow. She has, look, pictures of her in a new wig and costume. Oh, we're shocked. Whoa, that happened. Yes, we knew it would. Like, do you guys not know how to read? I don't understand. They, she told us it would. Like, what is the pro? Like, what? What is not connecting? Where's the disconnect? Why is it not computing? I don't understand. And it doesn't even matter because even if Starfire gets the most 
First of all, this doesn't make sense to say because there's a million different versions of her costume. But she gets the most comic accurate costume ever. And her wig is on fleek and she just looks so good. You guys will just find another thing to bitch about because she's just black most of the time. And you don't want to see that. And that's the real issue. They, they said the show was going to be a more mature version of these characters and that's absolutely what it is. So her actions... Dick's accents, the, you know, fuck Batman and beating the shit out of people. It all makes sense. Starfire was a killer before she got involved with the Titans. This is a fact. Anyone who actually read the comics, who actually gives a shit, who, like they claim, they would know this. Okay? But you guys don't actually care. You just... just you just trenders. Like, you just wanted to watch the show. And I feel like half of the people who are even complaining about this wouldn't even have acknowledge the show if they didn't see it as a way to bash DC like they were like "Ooh, look they picked some black chick to be in their show it's gonna be horrible let's watch it and let's hate watch it and put out bad reviews and then half of them were shocked that they actually liked it like you guys didn't care about the Teen Titans let's be real like this wasn't really a thing for you half of you didn't give a damn about this at all and it's really obviously because when 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 you talk about it, it's obvious to me that you know nothing about the, the origins of the characters. She was always a warrior. What are you talking about? Before she got with the team. And if you're basing your entire thing on the cartoon, the cartoon is not accurate to the comic. comics. And when the cartoon came out, fanboys were pissed because of that. And then, at some point, they decided to like it. And you guys did a whole, you know, 160 on what we should be basing you know, our titans on. Before it was like, oh, the cartoon needs to be just like the comics. And now you're like, oh, the show needs to be just like the cartoon. Like, shut up. They base it on the characters from the new Teen Titans. The comic books. And they put their own spin on that. And that's just what it is. And if you don't like it, you don't need to watch it. Feel free at any point in time to go rewatch Teen Titans from the early 2000s. You can watch that cartoon again at any point. At any point. At any time your heart so desires. You can just re-watch that series and shut the hell up. Okay? We can do that. And I have a special message for the Blurds. Okay? Before, as I end this show, this, this, this little rant. Okay? Y'all are whack. First of all, as a black person, you know you know that it doesn't make any sense that the, the the way people were attacking Anna and the excuses they were making to attack Anna was based on racism. You know they, they took her wig and not like in her wig and costume and they used that as a way to racially attack this woman and push her offline. And you decided, you know what I'm going to do? As a person who claims, who built my platform on the claims that I'm here to fight for the representation of black people in media and in, you know, superhero comic book genre, on this platform, I'm going to just jump in and decide to bash Anna's looks as well. This is helpful to her in what way? You guys don't actually care about black characters but you especially don't care about black female characters you've proved this with abby mills from sleepy hollow bonnie bennett from the vampire diaries okay you proved this with missy knight from luke cage and iron fist you prove this over and over and over again you're never there to defend them to demand better writing for them to do anything you only care about the other characters. You've done this over and over and over again. And, oh, I forgot Iris West from The Flash. Her as well. Okay, okay, cut it out. You guys are not helpful. You're just as racist. And, by the way, the reason no one wanted you in high school is because you're annoying. It's not because you're a nerd. You are alone because you're a jerk. And that's what a lot of these, like, nice guys, oh, I'm a blurred, people didn't like me, ooh, some black girl was mean to me in the fourth grade and I never let it go, uh. That's all you. That's your fault. Okay, grow up. And stop being liars. 
And to be honest, after the whole thing with Black Girl Nerds where she like conned a bunch of people out of money, I don't know why you guys are still firmly up these people's butts, but learn a thing for yourself, maybe. I mean, that's just my message. All of you need to do some self-reflecting because it's like you don't even have your own minds and it's embarrassing to watch and I'm tired of watching it. That's all I'm going to say about this. Um, if you don't like the show, don't watch the show. Watch something else. Um, no one cares what you think anymore at this point. It's redundant. It's boring. You don't even have new opinions. You've been saying the exact same thing over and over and over since like, I don't know what, May, April. We're all, we're all bored. We're all tired. Just enough. Go, go watch some cartoons, okay? Go watch some cartoons like the little baby you are. Leave the rest of us to our adult rated R show. We are having a good time. All right. Thank you very much. I'm um, looking forward to the next episode. I know you guys are too. So I will see you then. Bye, guys.